As of right now on WoW Presents, there's a limited series going on called Bring Back My Girls. Basically, it's a reunion for practically every season over the past couple years since the last DragCon in early 2020. First, I just want to say shout out TS Madison because she was doing back to back to back interviews with every single one of these casts and she was working so hard. And second, I just watched the season 12 reunion and it got me thinking about a lot of things. Season 12 is one of the most beloved modern seasons of Drag Race for a lot of good reasons. Of course, my first video essay on this channel was talking about season 12 and how amazing it was despite all the odds stacked against it. The cast, the performances and challenges, the runways, basically every guest judge, it felt like we were in such top tier drag race. Of course, the quality has persisted today in so many of these different departments, but season 12 of Drag Race just aired at the right time and everyone just remembers it in such a positive way. This specific special is so great because though there was so much positive and so many great vibes to come out of this era. Of course, people like Britta didn't come out of the era with the most fans. I just want to touch on this briefly because I think Britta is a star and when I met her, she was one of the sweetest people ever. But the main thing that I do want to focus on today is a topic that I've wanted to discuss for a while but never really knew how to put into words. However, with the help of other people's perspectives and this special, I finally really know how to talk about this topic. A once very debated topic that has thankfully died down into more positivity for both sides is who should have taken the crown in season 12. I truly think think that the top three of season 12 is one of the strongest we've ever had and any of them could have really taken it, but I'm happy that Jada did win. But the thing is, the next most likely to take the crown was Gigi Good, and a lot of people were a little confused why she didn't. The first video on my channel was a deep dive into season 12 and how some queens had to shift into different character positions in the season because of the disqualification and rushed edit to remove Sherry Pie. A lot of things were cut down, so we got a lopsided edit for a lot of the queens, and yet some queens were given a lot lot of development or just had all their conflicts aired. Things were blown out of proportion, a lot of attention was shifted, and we got to where we are today. And today, I want to share where I think GG both won and lost the crown and where Jada started to pick up steam to take it at the end. This can be considered a pseudo sequel video to the first deep dive I've ever done, but of course, I do not really want to talk about Sherry Pie anymore. At most, I'm going to be talking about the edit, but I'm going to try and cut out all the clips I can of her because I just want to leave that queen in the past. And of course, I just want to say I love GG Good, I'm not trying to tear her down by saying, oh, this is why you didn't win. It's more like in the eyes of the producers why they probably didn't pick her. And of course, I'm not trying to discredit Jada's win. If anything, I'm showing how it was more legitimate in the eyes of the producers. So let's jump into one of the greatest early season runs on Drag Race, right after a word from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Pocket Styler. You know those styling games we used to be obsessed with as kids? Well, this is the adult version of that. Pocket Styler is a mobile gaming app where you get to style your own avatar in any way that you like. I've already devoted a lot of time to the game because I find it super satisfying designing these outfits. In the game, you participate in various events with different dress codes, and it gives you a list of outfits in order to fit the requirements. After that, your outfits are submitted for global voting, and you can also vote on other players' outfits as well. Your goal over the course of the game is to climb the lead board and become a global trendsetter. After each in-game event, you get more cash that can be put towards future outfits for future events. I like to design some really chic outfits while at the same time designing stuff that's extremely crazy just to see how it's going to be rated. I want to see if you guys can beat me in-game because there's practically no limits to the creativity that you have. And what's cool is there's real brands in the game now so you may recognize some of the designs already. This game has taught me a lot about fashion and the inspirations and the do's and don'ts like how black stockings and white shoes shouldn't be allowed at a fashion show. You can play this game on the go, in your bed, out to dinner with your friends, and the app is completely free to download so I suggest you get it sooner rather than later. You can use my link in the description or scan the QR code to get started in game. And now let's get back to the video. Gigi walks into the workroom in a very well-tailored outfit that she considers very fashion while Jackie thinks it's camp. But just off of her intro alone, it's clear that Gigi is there to fit the fashion archetype for the season. A young fashion queen who's there to serve amazing looks but may struggle in the comedy challenges or performance challenges. Until that's immediately dismantled in a single episode. Yeah, so up to this point, we've seen a lot of young fashion queens come on the show and struggle in performance or comedy challenges. It's a stereotype that we expect Gigi to fit just based off of first glance, but someone 
someone who paved the way before her, Aquaria kind of broke the mold as well. A lot of Aquaria's run on season 10 was spent breaking down the stereotype of fashion queens can't perform well. A stereotype that was also started by Drag Race, but that's besides the point. So once Aquaria won season 10, fans realized, okay, there are fashion queens out there who can perform super well. And that allows the showrunners to give Gigi the praise a lot earlier into the season because people can now call back to Aquaria and be like, oh my god, Gigi's just like Aquaria. She's gonna give us great looks, but also be really good in performances. In episode one, we saw exactly that. Four amazing looks, high praise from Nicki Minaj in her verse, and comedy and a lip sync to show that she's extremely versatile. Back in 2020, when I first watched this episode, I was like, yeah, Gigi's obviously going to be a front runner, and I'm just so excited to see what she's gonna do. It really just seemed like she cracked the code, and everyone behind the scenes was there to support her. And that support continued into the next episode Gigi appeared in, The World's Worst. The challenge is not the best, but after rewatching it, I think Gigi's group was easily the strongest. And Gigi got praised from Heidi and herself in the confessionals to double down that she is a very, very good performer. Gigi is killing it. <laughs> Get it? Killing it because she was there. <laughs> it's hard to stand out as a corpse. And bitch, I know I did a damn good job. Get used to these performances from Gigi because for the next couple weeks, she's either getting a lot of praise from people or winning the challenge. And speaking of that, the ball ball is up next and we get to see Gigi's first win. There's this pseudo rivalry going on between Gigi and Nikki who are set up as the two fashion queens of the season, but it's pretty clear that Gigi is going to take the win. We see her sew a pretty intricate dress, have really good presentation on the runway, and just exceed all the expectations we had for her going into this episode. Jada and Nikki were also in the top with her and got similar amounts of praise, but it's clear they are pushing this whole narrative that Gigi is a young prodigy who is just dominating the competition. And that domination doesn't slow down into the next episode with Gay's Anatomy. A pretty funny acting challenge that has a performance from Gigi that makes Rue laugh a lot, impresses Carson, and gets praise from Jackie. Gosh, I wish my mother had survived a near-fatal tucking accident. <laughs> Tizzy, you're not- And um, Gigi, that was a perfect- when I walked into this competition, I thought of Gigi as just the fashion queen, and she's been serving it in the performance challenges too. Right now, even if Gigi doesn't win a challenge, every episode she gives a great performance and gets the proper praise for it. The momentum keeps growing and growing, and it basically reaches its peak in the next episode, Snatch Game. This episode is one of the best episodes I've ever seen for a queen's edit on the show. It's also the biggest sign of Gigi being a young prodigy who knows how to execute performance well. While in the workroom with her talking to Rue, Gigi proposes the idea of her doing Maria the Robot. Rue's classic response for Snatch Game run-throughs is either to say, ooh, I love that, or I don't know, you have to make me laugh, and can you do that? And Rue's response for Gigi definitely fell into the latter, but Gigi came back with this response. You understand my concern, because Absolutely. a robot doesn't really volley. I understand your concern, uh -huh. but okay. I do not have the same concern. Okay, all right. <laughs> well, you have a lot to think about. I do. But I feel like this is one of the first times we we've seen a queen say, oh, I like your input, but I'm not gonna take it. And if this was a lot of other queens' responses to Rue's advice, they would be flopping in the challenge. But Gigi took that pressure of setting herself up for failure in the edit and turned it into a challenge win, and damn, it is such a good episode for her. But it doesn't just stop at Snatch Game because we also get an amazing workroom talk with her talking about her gender identity. As of right now, this story that she shared is not the most up-to-date because she has come a long way and I have to give her so much praise for that. When Drag Race shows a background to a queen while also giving them the same win in the episode, it's a very clear sign that they're going to be going far and probably at least be a finalist in the competition. It's such a feel-good, satisfying way to tell a story over the course of an episode and a season-long arc, and after this episode, a lot of people were placing their bets on Gigi. For good reason, I mean every single episode that she has been in, it's only been praise, which is crazy. Drag Race does a presidential episode, which I love. It was on the season Sharon won, on the season I won, and on the season Gigi's gonna win. They've done <laughs> So eventually, unless she wins every single episode, the momentum is going to have to slow down at some point. And actually, the same day we got the best showcase of Gigi, we also got a very real showcase of her in Untucked. She made a comment about Heidi's makeup that kind of kicked Heidi while she was down. I don't think she meant it in any malicious way, but it just wasn't really phrased the best. And this isn't a turn for Gigi to show that she's some big villain and she's just been getting this polished, perfect edit. It's rather that she's getting this polished, perfect edit when she's really 
just human who may not make the best comments at the best time. Up to this point, there hasn't been a single moment on the show where Gigi hasn't been depicted as this prodigy who's perfect. So when we see this other side of her, the juxtaposition feels a lot worse, even though it's not honestly that bad, it's just two sisters who had a disagreement. But the feud continues out of Untucked into next week's episode, where it feels a little more even rather than Gigi kind of kicking Heidi while she's down. It's good because we do get to see Gigi's perspective and a little more where she was coming from and her apology, but still, it's the first sign that Gigi's human and she may not have all the answers that the show thinks she has. In the workroom and Untucked, we see a little more fault to Gigi, but that's not true in the main challenges because she gets another win here. Out of the six competitive episodes that she's appeared in, she's won three of them and been in the top two for another one. That is insane and anyone who thought that she was gonna win at this point, I mean, everyone else did too. Season 12 Snatch Game capped off the perfect winner's arc to Gigi, but of course that was episode 6 of 14. Gigi's win in Madonna the Rusical served more as a victory lap for her and storyline for Jan rather than adding to any story to Gigi. Like we've seen her perform well before, at most you could say that there was the choreography storyline of her not really being able to do it and then being able to do it in the actual performance, but that kind of goes over points that we've already had about her over the course of the season and the expectations and all that. She exceeds them again in this episode, but it's not as shocking. We're like, yeah, I mean, what can't she do at this point? So that's why I see it more as a victory lap rather than another story beat for Gigi. And with Gigi winning half of the episodes at this point, her momentum is just barreling out of control and sooner rather than later, I think it's just going to start to falter. And we see that with Droop, the first sign in the competition that Gigi may not have every single challenge completely down. Her ad was pretty good on paper, it just needed some fine tuning and it just kind of came off a little cocky. And the thing is, she had every right to be cocky up to this point because again, she was dominating the competition. But when you're trying to sell something and brand yourself, I feel like cockiness is not the way to do it. It created sort of a barrier between us and Gigi with Gigi kind of coming off as like, oh, I'm better than you, which was a very stark difference to the amazing character growth we've seen over the course of the competition. And again, this moment doesn't mean that she's showing her true self and she's some super villain. It was just a misguided attempt at being funny that came off a little more cringy. And acknowledging how well she's doing in the competition isn't the best move because everyone is now ultra aware of it and will be comparing her run from the first half of the season to the next half. And unfortunately, it doesn't get much better in the next three episodes for Gigi. None of her performances were bad in any way. Only Choices 2020 could have probably landed her in the bottom, but they wanted Widow out at that point. I just feel like living up to the expectations of winning so much got to her and it's just something that she could never really live up to regardless. In Choices, I think she had a couple really strong jokes. Human Girl will always make me laugh. I'm Gigi Good, fashion icon, pantsuit advocate, human girl. But it rehashed the robot jokes that Gigi did a couple episodes prior, and I do understand her thought process, thinking it may work again, but it just kind of came off as repetitive. The Superfan makeover runway was cute, but very, very safe, something that was extremely risky for her to do. And the One Queen show saw her overcome her anxiety with performance, and it was a pretty good showcase, but it definitely wasn't top tier. These past four episodes show that Gigi isn't perfect and that she can falter in the competition, and I think that's really good to make a well-rounded winner. But I think the way they went about dishing out her wins and showing all of her positives was a little lopsided, and it led to a mid-season performance that stuck with people for not all the best reasons. They try to circumvent this and make sure that we still see Gigi as a potential winner by giving her the win in the final episode. And yes, it was a very good win, a very strong performance, and I do think she deserved it. So with four wins and a top two placement under her belt, it really seems like she's the front runner for the season. But of course, there was a queen that was just as consistent and built up momentum more gradually over the course of the season. The gorgeous Jada Essence Hall, the winner of the season, took it home for a couple of reasons in my opinion. Her run started off extremely good, winning the first episode that she was in, and from there she was safe, high, safe, 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 high, win-win, bottom two, high. Why did I, what was the point of listing that out? While Gigi dominated the first half of the season, aside from a bottom two placement, Jada dominated the second half. And even in the first half, she wasn't doing bad by any means. Of course, having a high placement in the ball where she did so good, arguably deserving a high placement in Madonna, and even after struggling in the acting challenge, she did pretty good there too. But for sake of time and not to be too repetitive, I'm gonna cut straight to the point. What stuck out to me about Jada's win and her wins over the course of the competition was one main thing. Every win 
time that she got, along with her high placements, showed that she was capable of branding herself extremely well. Gigi was able to show off herself and her brand in the first couple episodes, but getting to the second half and translating the brand outwards, Jada was much more successful at that. The branding challenge showed that she was able to sell her personality and the product. In the makeover, her drag is able to be translated onto other people, but the main win that I do really think won her the season was her performance in Choices 2020. A lot of reality competition shows have become a microcosm for real life. It feels weird to say that, but it's honestly extremely true. And before I continue, do not get me wrong, Jada's win was not because of any movement. Jada's win came in because she had amazing drag and was the best representation for the year 2020. Gigi's edit in the second half of the season was there to show that she was human and there was a chance that she wouldn't win a crown at the end. But part of the edit that was treated as more of a footnote in the story, even though it had a lot of weight behind it, was in Choices 2020. For the entirety of season 12, Drag Race was pushing a lot of political messages and telling people to vote. It was the year of a very important election that attempted to keep a certain person out of office again. And when Gigi came on and said that she wasn't very political and politics kind of scared her, it took away all the momentum from her. Her run. I'm going to be honest, politics and the economy have always been some things that are rather terrifying to me. If a person's scared of politics, I understand why, and Gigi was definitely young and still learning so much. I'm not here to dwell on the things she said shortly after the season or what she said on the season because that's a person in the past. But if we're analyzing who should win out of these three people in this certain time frame, Jada's run spoke so much more to the brand at the time. Her drag was easily transferable to other people, she was able to sell her her personality and her brand, and that personality was just magnetic, and she won the political challenge while delivering the most commentary on politics in the challenge. I really wanted to like show how politicians are with like, well, whatever we have to say to get their attention off of me. The insults that she threw were so quick. And it's actually a beautiful social commentary on politics. Yeah. So when at a crossroad with three insanely strong competitors, I think the producers made the right choice by choosing Jada. Gigi was a powerhouse with so much to offer, but it still seemed like she needed to find herself a little more. And following her for the past two years since the show aired, it's very clear that she's now finding herself. She was such a strong competitor on season 12, but after watching her grow in these past couple years, I know if she ever goes back on, she's taking that crown. The choice of the winner at the end of the day will always be based on what's the best for the brand of Drag Race. Miss Good was definitely marching through the challenges and showcasing why she's a strong competitor on the show, but for her overall brand and being able to be pushed out in the year 2020, I think Jada was the correct choice. At the end of the day, I hope we can engage in positive discourse about both of these queens because they deserve all the love in the world. I'm a huge fan of both of them and of course, I want to be here to uplift these queens. This was just my opinion on why the producers chose Jada over Gigi, it doesn't mean that Gigi is not a good queen whatsoever. She's human, she's uberly talented, and I have nothing but love for her. If you're in the comments, please remain positive and do not send hate to any of the queens. Remember, it's easy to hate, but it's a lot more fun to spread love. I haven't done a deep dive in a while, but I was really happy to get back into this. If you haven't checked out my Call Me Mother video, please do. I'll see you on Friday with a new recap for Call Me Mother and a new video very, very soon. I messed up the outro, but I really don't know how to reward it, so I'm just going to say it again. I'll see you soon with another video.